you guys find yourself in a position now, I imagine, I'm sure you, I'm sure it's the case, where a lot of people are coming to you now to seek advice about competing and performing and getting better, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, just um, with our, our, our choreographies that we send out, we coach a lot of couples, a lot of soloists. Um, mm -hmm. And um, not just with that, some people just come for training. And when we go to events, like even while we were at Summit this year, the fact that we weren't competing, we still mm -hmm. taught so many privates to, to a bunch of people. And yeah, um, yeah that's it. We, we want to share our knowledge too. Uh, at the end of the day, we, we, we live off of this and our, our job is to share this information. And I, I love to do that. And mm -hmm. uh, it's nice to be able to to do that like there's so many there's the the performance aspect of being a dancer if you're an instructor and if you're a choreographer i really see it as three different roles right mm -hmm. and um for me i love all three of them i just i feel like we've been abandoned of performing but um <laughs> hopefully that comes back soon i really miss it i love i love getting on stage i really enjoy it um but yeah the the performance aspect is one thing but just the choreographing for for our students and just coaching them even if it's on another choreography or um or just general dancing mm. body movement um just seeing someone get better is 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 something that so as, an, as an instructor yeah is super rewarding absolutely mm -hmm. You guys come out every year with, with new routines, multiple routines, and you guys always have really nice costumes. How do you guys go about deciding on a costume for a comp? Oh, that's Sammy's favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely one of my favorite parts, absolutely. Um, I, do, I, I do a lot of research. I love Pinterest, and I love um, looking up uh, costumes from different dance styles. Uh, ballroom, samba, belly dancing, all kinds of stuff. It's just, in I, I've always loved it. I've always been interested in that. So mm -hmm. for me, I just love looking at pictures and then trying to. And I love that she loves it. So because that totally relieves me of having to research costumes. And she's just like, I think this is going to look really good on you. And I'm like, that's perfect. <laughs> and I, have, I also am really lucky to have a really, really good um, costume designer. Her name is Mireille Saint Hilaire. She's uh, she lives uh, just outside of Montreal. She's been making my costumes since I was about twelve 14. years old. Yeah, twelve, yeah. twelve, wow. seventeen years old. Yeah, from when I started. So my first team routines and uh, everything was made from her. So she's really, really good, and I'm super mm -hmm. lucky to have her. And yeah, we just yeah, try. She's always and... executed anything we've wanted. She was. She was really good. She yeah. was really good. She's she making your old costumes like... as well, Adriana? Yeah, she makes all of my costumes. She makes our sets, uh, our solo costumes, everything, everything. Amazing. And so, like, if, if someone wanted to improve their competition or their competitiveness, if, some, if a dancer wants to improve their competitiveness, what advice would you give them? Do you have, like, three tips for competitors? Three tips for competitors for their but yeah. for their competitiveness. Yeah, how how can you become a more competitive dancer? Okay. Uh, well, first of all, I think that starts with within. Some people are more competitive, and some people are less competitive. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some people don't like competition, and that ha I feel like the dancing aspect obviously doesn't need to be competitive, right? It's a choice that you make. Right, mm -hmm. so establishing that choice is the first step, um, and, mm -hmm. knowing, and why. knowing your commitment. Yeah. Right, why? Why am I competing? Um, when yes, you can just showcase it and not have someone judge you. Right, mm -hmm. uh, for me, it was always the goal. Um, I can definitely say honestly, winning was my goal. I set it as a very clear goal for myself, and I mm -hmm. wasn't going to stop until I did. And even now that I have won multiple times, I will still push myself to maybe compete again, right? And, and mm -hmm. why? Why once you've won and you don't really have to prove anything, but it really stems to yourself. Mm -hmm. And we, if you we really, really want, love it, right? If, we yeah, enjoy I enjoy it. that adrenaline. I enjoy putting myself up on the line and saying, you know what? I may lose tonight, but you know what? I'm happy because I'm doing it. And this makes mm. me feel really good. 
And I love the adrenaline that it gives me. And it, it's like a drug, right? Mm -hmm. A good drug. A healthy one. But, yeah, <laughs> but it is what it is, right? And, and, and I think that's the beautiful part about it, if you enjoy it. And then if you don't, mm -hmm. then it could just not be for you that, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. definitely that part of establishing why you do it um, and making sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, a couple of other tips is I think is really important when you're getting into a competition to understand what it is that you're getting yourself into exactly. So mm -hmm. the criteria that the judges are looking for, uh, making sure you really understand the rules and what's required, what's not required. Um, That's any competition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, because some competitions may be the, it might be an open competition, right? You get there and everybody can be like knowing your rules is super important yes. in any competition. Because we've seen it many times, you know, um, with students where writing. great couples get disqualified or right or any things like that. Or you register. Or they the lose points for too many tricks, or, or lifting someone off the ground, or there are lots of things that exactly. get overlooked. I think we'll just yes. take a routine right. here and we'll do this. Knowing your rules in any game, any mm -hmm. game regardless of competition, is always an advantage. It's super important because you're, you're, you're going to start off with a goal in mind, right? And so in order to properly achieve that goal, you need to follow the rules sometimes. Be curious. Mm -hmm. Be curious. Why? Um, if anyone who knows me knows I ask a million questions. If I don't know something, I'm going to sure. ask you a million questions. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason being, that curiosity will eventually answer a lot of questions for you but if you're not curious then you should ask yourself how much do you really want it right because someone who really wants something is gonna have is gonna be eager to understand more right mm -hmm. so if you're really that competitive and you really want to achieve something then you need to create that for yourself and get that invested into it to make sure that you're curious enough to go and get all this information and mm -hmm. um, be available and be open that maybe you don't know certain things and maybe you're going to discover certain things and just be open to it and go and get that information because that's what's going to make you a better dancer and a better competitor mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and then finally going out and getting that information and yeah. making sure that every day you're, you're working towards your goals. You know, it's about putting in that work and making sure that you stay disciplined throughout and there's going to be moments that are harder. There's going to be days where you won't feel like training or feel like going to class, but you need to remember why you're doing it and stay mm. focused and committed to it. Do you guys have to motivate each other sometimes if someone's having like an off yeah, day? For sure. for sure. How do you, how do you guys do that? <sighs> how do we do that? Samantha yells at me. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> She yells at me and I just get scared. So I just like, okay, I'm going to go now. <laughs> um, but so that's definitely not the Canadian influence. That's the Italian influence no, that's the taking Italian over blood. the... <laughs> <laughs> um, no, well, look, we honestly, I really do feel like Samantha does motivate me a lot. And I feel this, I feel like I do as well. Like we, we have a great partnership and um, the, the level of understanding, I think a lot of people... Um, can't even imagine because we've been together since we were little kids and we've grown up together. So we really know, uh, I, we know how to push each other's buttons as much as we know how to, we, we know how to Be understand and, and communicate. And we've, yeah. and we've gone to our periods where it was a lot harder, right? Mm -hmm. And as a teenager, when you don't understand uh, that level of communication, you need to be able to sustain a, a successful relationship, uh, not only as a business partnership, but as a couple and, mm -hmm as a dance couple so it, it's it, it's just been a bit of everything right so we kind of know how to deal with that now that we're at a certain age and we've matured a lot more and the business helped us grow so much um and kind of made us grow up a lot faster i feel because of that that sense of responsibility but um yeah i feel yeah. like uh, at this point we do definitely motivate each other and we we help ourselves set out for what we want and um we're both very ambitious and so far it's been working pretty well for us. We're happy. <laughs> How many hours uh, per day or per week would you guys train? Say like you're leading up to a competition. It, it really depends. Like uh, at, towards the end of before comp, uh, I really just run my numbers. I don't even mm -hmm. focus on very small details. I just hardcore 
running it, sweating, and just dancing because ultimately that's what we do. Once you've choreographed something, you know what you got to do. So yeah. you just you Definitely just dance it out and and try to get as much feeling and emotion out of yourself while you're practicing. So by the time you get to the stage, you're you're not forcing yourself and it, and it feels natural. Every every everything that you're hitting with the music is just ah right on. And you don't even have to question yourself about it while you're on stage. And that's what I like to feel. And I really feel like I only get that once I really sweat out my routines. Mm -hmm. That's when I feel good about it. Because there's times where I perform and I don't feel good about it because I didn't work it long enough or it's, it's just not there yet, right? And that's yeah. okay. And that's normal. And I think you still got to perform it anyway and get through it so that you know how to work through that too. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, I feel the weeks um, leading up to competition – like he said, well, even I don't even think it's about the amount of time that you put into it at that point. Um, sometimes it's we'll have more productive rehearsals if we do an intense 45 minutes um, of just running it and repeating it and um, going over our stuff over and over instead of, you know, doing a three hour rehearsal where we're working details, you know, but that all depends on where you're at in the process. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, when we're in the creating phase, um, We'll it's have, just put on the music and dance and right. And those let's see if something those comes rehearsals out of this. tend to be a lot longer, right? Because we're we're kind of just going with it and you're creating brainstorming and, at that point, right? Mm -hmm. Like your rough draft. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you guys rehearse and when you're training people to run their routines before a competition, do you typically start slow, like really slow? Like, do you have an app with for music where you slow down the routine and then really like? step by step uh, i really go i try not to do that right away like sometimes if it's necessary um depending if you're talking about my students let's say if they need it and like they want to go two percent or five percent slower we have, we have a ten percent rule so we never go um yeah i'll never go under ten percent ten percent really why is that uh, because we find when our students start learning at a very slow tempo it takes them a lot longer to eventually reach that 97% if that was the goal, right? Depending on the song, obviously, because some songs are even at 95% are still almost undanceable because they're so fast. So that yeah. obviously depends on the tempo. But um, if, a, if a song is like a medium tempo, let's say our, our student is projected to dance it at 100 or 98%, um, mm -hmm. we'll usually, even if they want to start it slow, we won't go under 90% um, just because we feel that it takes them a lot uh, I think that pushes start. what what gives you that. Okay, I got I gotta be on. Mm -hmm. I gotta be on. Mm -hmm. And then if there's something that's not working, that means that you have to literally stop the music. Mm. Because if you're dancing it to music, that means that you know your your routine. You know mm -hmm. where's your cross by lead and where's your inside turn and mm -hmm. whatever combination that you're gonna do. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel like once once you get to the music, that that has to be registered already, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. It's choreography at that point, right? You're not just freestyling. So yeah. I think you should be already at a point where you can run it with your music, right? Even if it's just a section at a time. Mm -hmm. But know your section so that when you push play, you can do that section at 95 mm -hmm. or at 97. Whatever you're able to yeah. do. It doesn't, or 90 even. Just that mm -hmm. when it, it starts getting too slow, it starts, because chances are, you're, depends how fast your song is too. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, it really Don't all get me wrong. on that. But. Um, but in general, we try to keep it in that range just so that you don't get too used to um, too, slow, too right? slow. And sometimes mm. you end up um, kind of developing bad habits when you're learning something too slow. And when we choreograph, we make sure that we always do our job um, at 100%, right? So that we know mm -hmm. that the choreography that we're giving our student is... Is going to work at 100%. It's right? achievable. Like, <laughs> I have to be able to do it at 100% for someone else. I can't give you something at 100 and you're only able to do it at, at 90, let's say. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, it has to be feasible. It has to be feasible. So we make sure that it's mm -hmm. feasible and then we work between a 10% range for the tempo. This is likely why you guys are so fast. Like I, I interviewed Billy Fajardo um, a couple of times over the last month. And then when I was with him in Miami. I miss Billy. For one of the for one of the competitions one year and I was, and I was talking about you, Adriano, and he's like, Oh, the kid's got quick feet. He's really fast. Yeah. <laughs> and this is probably why, cause you don't dance, uh, you don't dance your routine slow. It's always fast. No, but it, I had... again, it all depends your goal because you could come out with a slow salsa, right? That's mm -hmm. a lot of times competitive salsa is usually faster, 
right? Mm-hmm. Uh, of but course. it doesn't mean that you can't dance salsa slow, right? So mm-hmm. um, it's just it's just that, right? We mm-hmm. we just push ourselves, and a lot of our students that come to us that are trying that are are going into competition are there to compete, right? So mm-hmm. we, we try to push them, and if they pick a song, we try to keep it as as much as possible in that range, so that it pushes them to to achieve mm-hmm. that, right? And we'll always go with our students' level as well. We're never gonna give you something that I know is physically impossible for you. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, but yeah. I had private lessons with Oliver Pineda uh, one year before competing at the summit. And and he goes, okay, uh, put your music on and slow it down 40%. And I was like, what? what, really? And he's like, why are you laughing? No, 40% minus now, do it. <laughs> I was like, I thought he was joking, like minus 40%, like that's, that's unheard of. But everyone has a different way of, of doing things. Absolutely. And but there's no right and wrong at the end of the day. No, absolutely Someone not. Someone prefers to do it a and certain way. Here's the thing, dancing slow is also, personally, I find dancing slow much harder um, than dancing fast, right? Because you need absolutely. to be so much more You need to fill all that time. Right, mm-hmm. and be so much more in control of your movement, which is often where the hard work is. Uh, we can mm-hmm. mask uh, some of that movement when with speed, right? Uh, you can get away with certain things. Or so. you can move very, really, very well, true. really fast. Or you can... <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Never forget that option. <laughs> That's the option we try to. That's the option I try for. to sell. Okay. <laughs> uh... <laughs> 